Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for that time of the month again. No, not that time of the month. But the time of the month where I talk about the world economy and what's really going on, where I decipher the headlines for you out there, and we can all uh, laugh together instead of crying in unison. So, um, first article that jumps out at me, uh, this has been building for some time, the Federal Reserve is planning to buy $60 billion of Treasury bills per month. Oh, but they're saying don't call it quantitative easing. Why, you say? Well, because they've already used that name the last three or four times they did this. So uh, it says they're going to begin at least a six-month operation to buy $60 billion a month. So 60 times 6 is $360 billion. I went to public school. I can do maths. Yeah, and so that's uh, at least. That's a conservative estimate. You know, of course, uh, my last video I talked about how they plan to pump pretty much as much money as they need into the system over a two-week period just to keep the, uh, the overnight repo rate, um, you know, from getting excessive. In other words, just another way to keep large corporations and banks liquid. And, uh, you know, to help them operate overnight and for the system, you know, to not just shut down and some giant catastrophe. But, uh, you know, as always, I like to read the quotes of all of our expert overlords. And this is a good one. This this has a few choice uh, quotes in it. They are going for it, said Ralph Axel. Like, first of all. Who is named Ralph Axel? That doesn't even sound like, like a regular person name. But this is an interest rate strategist at Bank of America. Can you imagine that's your job now? That probably is a job, if you think. It's probably actually a career path, a lucrative one. Interest rate strategist. You know, So uh, everybody out there about to enroll in university, make sure you talk to your guidance counselor when you're picking courses uh, to see if... You know, maybe becoming an interest rate strategist is for you. You know, maybe you don't want to be a social worker or a, or a lawyer or a doctor. <laughs> okay, so let me read the quote. They are going for it, said Ralph Axel. They are hitting this hard. I think it's the right thing to do. Whew. Everybody out there can breathe a sigh of relief because when somebody at Bank of America tells you somebody's doing the right thing, well... <laughs> All I'm saying is it helps me sleep better at night. I don't know about you. Here we have more uh, outright lies in 1984 speak. Fed Chairman Jerome H. Powell revealed plans to resume the organic growth of the central bank's balance sheet earlier this week, implying that it would buy treasuries in line with the growth of the central bank's liabilities. Um, at what at what point in a normal, sane world would anyone claim that printing money and buying up government debt is organic growth? But you see how they, you, you see how they, uh, you know, they try to put lipstick on this pig and then get you to make out with it. But it's absolute garbage. This is nonsense, and it's right there in plain view. It's like. This again, this is why I only do one of these videos every once in a while now because I would lose my mind if I pretended to care about this stuff on a daily basis. I can only do this once a month. Here, here we have another expert, a uh, head of global rate strategy at TD Securities. Man, wow, what a career path! They are buying aggressively, said Priya Misra. This is much more than organic. It is building a reserve buffer, which is a good thing. Thanks for telling us, you know, <laughs> the difference between good and bad, right and wrong, up and down. Yes, we are so fortunate to have these people <laughs> micromanaging every aspect of our lives, aren't we? So moving on from this, just some more nonsense, more lies, more reason why you can't trust, uh, you know, the people running the show regardless of what puppet is uh, the president at the moment in any given country at any given time. Um, here we have more. I'll just say this is good news. If you're, if you're a global rate strategist, 
if your career is interest rates, I don't know how that's a thing. But again, more great news. Singapore eases monetary policy for first time in three years. So again, we have a nicely spun headline. It sounds positive, right? Singapore eases monetary policy, right? I mean, why do we want to make life harder? We want things to be easier, right? We want, we want, we want to have more ease in the world, not unease, not disease. We want more ease. Well, Singapore's central bank has decided it's just going to go ahead and give that to us because that's what we need right now. So anyways, they have their own clever way of um, manipulating their currency. I'll just put it bluntly like that. You know, Their economy is growing less than expected. We have Hong Kong slipping into a recession. You know, um, All kinds of issues there. Here we have India. Cutting rates for the fifth time amid economic slowdown and banking woes. Uh, if you've been paying attention to the news this month, there have been some big banks in India which have been unable to pay their depositors. So they're only going to be able to pay out a percentage of that. And people are trying to do bank runs. And the banks are essentially frozen. So, um, hey, they're just going to go ahead and print some more money. <laughs> here, we, here we have some more great quotes. There is policy space to address these growth concerns by reinvigorating domestic demand, the central bank said in a statement. <laughs> we're not printing money. We're not debasing your currency. We're not, you know, uh, causing massive inflation and, uh, you know, ruining future generations, posterity. No, we're reinvigorating things. <laughs> so, yeah. Again, economy so strong, they've got to print more money. So now you have more dollars chasing the same amount of goods. And what's that going to do to real inflation? Oh, here we go. While the recent measures announced by the government are likely to help strengthen private consumption and spur private investment activity, the continuing slowdown warrants intensified efforts to restore the growth momentum, the central bank said. In other words... Bend over and grab your ankles, kids. <laughs> Here we have another expert. I mean, just look at this person's face. She has expert written all over her face. With those big Dumbo ears and these uh, donkey teeth. Oh, that's the prime minister of a country. New Zealand's prime minister says government always looking at ways to stimulate economy because we all know that governments are the ones who produce things, right? Governments produce goods and services. <laughs> another another classic quote that's classic Jacinda Ardern we are certainly mindful of the role we have to play to stimulate the economy how about getting out of the way how about not printing money to save your cronies the big banks all of the people who are gambling and derivatives and creating bubbles and uh, you know prohibiting um Green, truly green energy and free energy from coming to market, you know, keeping the old petrodollar system in place. Ardern continues with, of course we tried to get ahead of that in the decisions we made in the 2019 budget. Of course we did. Guys, we're all over this, okay? I've got my finger on the print button right now. What are you worried about? Well, so how how is this all working out for everybody? So let's take a look at this. If I can get my mouse to work. Here we go. Why Sweden is set to raise retirement age and how it will change. So next week they're going to vote in parliament. It's uh, already considered to be a foregone conclusion. They're going to be raising the retirement age. So you got to work an extra year. You got to wait an extra year before you can withdraw those benefits, you know. Hey, socialism works, just so long as you never actually need to withdraw anything from the system. Here we have China, even China's joining, and China's central bank eyes noticeable decline in interest rates to help drive growth. People's Bank of China says it will make flexible use of multiple monetary tools to maintain reasonable, ample, reasonably ample liquidity. Deepen interest rate liberalization. 
Guys, if you can't see that these people are the ultimate criminals, I mean, the way they talk, nobody talks like that. You know what I mean? This is just, this is just a telltale sign of, of a criminal, of a psychopath, of a sociopath. Unfortunately, the world is run by those people. So, you know, it's like, <clears throat> of course, always, uh, you know, you don't pay attention to what people say. You pay attention <clears throat> to what people do. China's central bank continues to load up on gold. China has added almost 100 tons of gold to its reserves over the last 10 months. Just the last 10 months. So it's one of the leading central bank buyers of the precious metal. So while they're printing more money so that any money you have saved is worth less, they're buying gold, which of course they're telling you is a relic um, you know, of thousands of years ago, which has no real value, <clears throat> then why are you buying it? It's because they're getting ready for a switch, a transition, uh, you know, once this entire thing collapses and implodes. When's that going to happen? Nobody knows, you know. It's like musical chairs. It really is. Right now, the music's still playing. But they're, but they're definitely running out of chairs. So, um... Last year, central banks, led by Russia, bought more gold than at any time since America decided to move off the gold standard in 1971. <laughs> so all these countries are buying gold, uh, you know, in record amounts since, you know, Tricky Dick Nixon pulled the, pulled the dollar off the gold standard because he realized there's no way we're going to be able to pay back this debt. And plus, we like our little war in Vietnam. It's a pretty clever thing. It makes our uh, elites a lot of money. <laughs> Here we have another article. Central banks make record gold purchases. I mean, these articles are all, are all very recent. All from uh, this month or just a month or two ago. And uh, it's just, it's, this should alarm you. You know what I mean? If you're If you're looking for ways to prepare yourself... Another article here. This is from three days ago. According to the World Gold Council, a dozen central banks have increased their gold reserves by at least one ton, one ton through the first eight months of 2019. And it says there seems to be no signs of letting up. And notice all these countries that are cutting their interest rate, excuse me, liberating their interest rates <laughs> are also buying gold. How's the Dow Jones looking today? It's pretty flat. Not much going on there. Um, here we have an article. Dutch Central Bank, world will need gold if entire system collapses. Huh. So it's almost like everything I've been saying uh, has pretty much been true. And so here we have the Experts admitting that this is why they're loading up on gold because they're getting ready for something extremely nasty. Here we have another article: Gold in, dollar out. Russia set to become world's fourth biggest reserve holder. This is just from three days ago. Another interesting article: Russia dumps U.S. dollar. Country's top oil producer chooses euro for all future deals. So. It's almost like there's a concerted effort at the very top, the hidden hand, to bring down the U.S. Uh, and transition into a new system where, I don't know, maybe China uh, has the most economic influence and, um, you know, maybe a certain country in the Middle East named Israel also gets to do pretty much whatever it wants and make deals with all these countries under the table and behind our backs and, you know, sell out technology and secrets. Um, all the while, America slowly smolders um, and becomes, you know, just a, a massive dumpster fire, you know, which can never be turned into something, you know, into its former self. Here we have why central banks are dumping the dollar. I had a quote here. 
Mm, 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 mm. Where was it? I had it, I had it highlighted. There it is. Goldman Sachs analysts have said that dollar reserves slipped nearly four percentage points over 2017 and 2018. So, I mean, here you go. Goldman Sachs is even doing the math for everybody. And finally, on a more uh, personal note, car debt on the rise in Iowa as U.S. car buyers owe $1.3 trillion in auto loan debt. You've heard of the everything bubble? There's like a bubble in everything. And that's because the fact that they won't let the economy reset, the fact that they keep pumping fake money into the system to keep the banks liquid um, is providing no incentive for prices to, of, of goods and services to actually go down like cars. And so now people have to get a car loan for like seven years or 10 years. Of course, you know, the, the value of the car drops immediately once you drive it off the lot. And then maybe in five years, if you can even still operate it because they're, you know, made very shoddily these days, um, you still owe money on it and it's not worth anything. So it's like every everything you can buy right now is a losing proposition. There's only really, in my opinion, a few things left that are not, you know, peak bubble. And that would be gold and silver, of course. Um, you know, Bitcoin is a bit speculative. I don't want to get into that too much on here. Um, you know, some people might even say farmland, if you can find that out in the country. Maybe if, you know, with a water source on it, you could drill and have a well or, you know, grow your own food, have some chickens, raise some uh, livestock. But really, it's gold and silver. That's the only thing that's left to invest in. Everything else is in a bubble. Housing is at um, pre-2008 levels once again, but this time with fewer buyers. Uh, we have, again, we have sort of a new subprime scheme uh operating there. You know, we have record car loan defaults. We have pension fund defaults. We have banks being frozen in India, central banks moving in lockstep to liberate or liberalize their interest rates, i.e. screw the middle class. So if you're still looking for something uh, to protect yourself, look into gold and silver. If you have an IRA or a 401k and you want to roll it over, uh, check out the link below. There's a free gold investing kit. If you click on it and you're interested, um, leave your info. They will contact you to send you the kit. Um, if you have a smaller amount that you want to invest in metals, you know, buying silver is a good way to do it. And you can usually get American Eagles. You get about 20 of them for under $400. So those are both excellent ways to go. Um, of course, if you get the gold IRA, the benefit of that is that you can buy a lot. It's still physical gold, so you're not having the counterparty risk of buying a gold ETF on the stock market, which is a total fraud. Um, and this way you don't have to store it all in your home, although you can choose to take physical delivery of it, and it still retains all the tax benefits of your regular IRA, so you won't get penalized there. But anyway, I hope we've all had a very enjoyable time covering the uh, financial lies, I mean the financial news. As you can see, it is clearly us against them because uh, these programs are not going to last much longer because they're getting ready for the switch. They're getting ready for the transition. And God only knows what's going to trigger um, events that they can't slow down or stop. You know, is it going to be a war with Iran? Is it going to be... Uh, civil unrest or some type of election fiasco in the U.S. in 2020? Who knows? Is it going to be China having uh, massive social unrest because even they're suffering? You know, the, the CCP over there and, and, um, and China land is, is having a hard time keeping it together for them. Their middle class is not buying as much anymore. So who knows, you know? But all you can do is prepare, and in my opinion, get gold and silver while it's cheap. It probably won't be that way forever, and it's already risen about 15 to 20 percent this year, so it is it is showing major signs of new life. So just go check that out. Check out the link below if you're interested. And yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in a month or so on the next one. 
Take care.